thought it said Cranach Centre parking on the left. Perhaps it did. Yeah, I could probably have gone a little bit further back, but there was a walking and cycling friendly road sign. <laughs> so, there's plenty of parking here anyway. Don't know if I need a ticket though. Let's go and have a look down here, Pops. Obviously the marina. And that's the crack. And we are up there. Let's have a look down here. Oops. Smell wood smoke. Someone said there was snow up there. Yeah, yeah, you can't quite see the top then. Oh, wow, look at this. Come on puppy, you're alright. Lots of smells. The dog will either love it or hate it. Yeah. And I've got funny feelings for it to love it. Yeah. <laughs> She's not so sure about the bridge. No. I'll do a wee introduction here. Yeah, okay. So my name's John and before we get onto the crag, I'll tell you just a little bit about the Cranogs and Loch Tay. Yeah. Archaeologists have discovered 18 cranogs in this loch, nine of them dating back to two and a half thousand years ago. Wow. And one of those is where they're having their excavation. That's where all the finds have come from in right. the museum. It's called the Oak Bank Cranog. This big hill in front of you here is known as Drummond Hill. If you follow it right down to its very point, just beyond that point, there's a little village called Fernand, and that's where the Oak Bank Cranog is. Okay. In the loch right next to that village. The way to travel around it to have a look to see what's happening. Here. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. There is nothing to see. Right. It's all underwater archaeology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of it's sunk then. I yeah. was thinking always thinking when you see sort of piers like that, was that once a Cranach or is there? Well I can show you where yeah. the Cranach is right now. Yeah. Right there. That little island. Oh there, right, yeah. yeah. That's a Cranach. That's the remains of one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, no, it's not. That's a great big pile of rocks. Yeah, well, that's what's happened. I'll explain how that comes about when we go yeah. to the Cranog itself. It's not what you think. No, okay. There are six Cranogs that can be seen, some of them only in dry weather. When, yeah. You know, you can imagine when they collapse, they form a kind of mound, and some of them collapse right into the loch and underneath the surface of the water. Yeah. Um, but as I say, that's one you can see. There's a few you can see year round, and that's one of them. There are just over 500 cranogs that have been discovered in Scotland. Well, wow. the thing about Scotland is there are over 31,000 locks here. Yeah. And each and every one of them have to be looked at properly to see if there's a cranog there or not. <laughs> wow. So it's a lifetime's work for someone if you're looking for a job. You won't get paid for it, but you're very highly thought of. <laughs> um, for instance, in Ireland they've discovered over 2,000 and they're still counting. It's yeah. the same here in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. This walkway is perfectly safe. Yeah. It's a bit uneven, we've tried to keep it as authentic as possible. Yeah. And if you look down at your feet, you'll see lots of small gaps that are designed yes. perfectly for car keys, mobile phones, uh, yeah. compact cameras. <laughs> They're yeah. all down there. You don't want to add yours to the collection. I'm sure <laughs> quite a long walk. That'd be archaeology for well, someone in 2,000 years' yeah. time. Yeah. Well, I wonder why people in Cranach are using iPhone 5s and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll go in now. When you get in, just give your eyes a second or two to adjust. It's quite dark. Yeah. Uh, I'll get you sat down so we're all nice and safe in the park. Okay. Come on Right 
Yeah. All right. Huh? Jump ups. We'll start with the construction of the building itself. These posts you see beside us here, there are 124 of them driven into the bed of the wall. How many Well, that was absolutely fascinating. I couldn't uh, show you all the talk, but uh, I was explaining how the Cranachs were built, uh, how people lived in here, why they were built, and uh, it's well worth a little visit. It was interesting why they built on uh, Austin Dart, but... You take your mask off now for a minute. <laughs> why, why they were um, built out here. Yeah. You think, well, why, why would they go out here? And you were saying, well, big old forest over there. Yeah, and it would have been dense forest to, to, clear. to clear everything. Yeah. So that get all your livestock in here and uh, clear, make a clearing in there. And you could have your your farming animals in there whilst you were safe over here. Yeah. Plus, I suppose they also had some sort of defensive yeah. reasons as well, didn't they? Pull up the drawbridge, sort of. Thing. Effectively, yeah, they'd have a ha hazel thicket out here. Yeah. But yeah, no, absolutely fascinating. I don't really, I want to go into all the reasons, but if you get a chance, have a visit here. It'd be a nice lengthy tour, wouldn't it? Yeah, and we were on our own as well. We were on our own, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, we're, yeah, enjoyed that a lot. We're now going to go into the museum. Fortunately, Poppy's not allowed in the museum. I don't think it was something Poppy particularly enjoyed, was it? No, Poppy wanted to get out all the time, and she was eating the straw, and they... <laughs> And the wall, the wall on, on the floor, yeah. yeah. A beautiful view there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Across there as well. Yeah, enjoyed that. So you've got drills, lathes. And obviously the pottery. So we had a really good demonstration of how the drills and uh, the pottery works. And how the lathes work. So we had a little talk about textiles and uh, the spin, spun wool. Uh, dyeing the wool. All the different colours, how they got the different colours. The yellows and the reds. Now yeah, I get to try some 2,000 year old bread and butter. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> An ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some nettle tea. Okay. Some nettle, nettle tea. Yeah. That's lovely. Iron Age. Oh, that's good. Just ignore the teapot. I had a really good de demonstration of uh, some of the, the grains and fruits. And. Uh, and the cooking. And Poppy's getting hungry, aren't you? <laughs> In the Iron Age, they wouldn't have had books. So we have a book, but that's not very authentic. They would have told stories through the oral tradition. Yeah. Sitting around the fire, passing on knowledge. <laughs> and that happens right up until, well, still happening today. Yeah. Um, but right up until almost the 19th, 20th centuries, you see people in rural communities passing on stories that yeah. aren't written down. Yeah. Um, and we still have that in Lafayette. Um, but... George is going to read the puppet show story. Yes. <laughs> I think we need a new script. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit okay. Are you ready, Rachel? Um, <laughs> yes! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Many years ago, on the side of Loch Tay, there lived a little girl, and her name was Kaya. Kaya! Say <laughs> Kaya, Kaya! <laughs> Oh, you can be loaded with that! <laughs> Hello! She lived in a wooden house with her family on the edge of the water. Hello. A granon. A granon, yeah. But it's Poppy interest. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Poppy! <laughs> One day, Kai's father came out to see her. She was sitting on the beach and 
said, Kaya, I have something very important for you to do. We need you to take a basket with some fish. Oh, hang on. <laughs> fish! <laughs> some herbs. And some oh. honey. <laughs> to the next village to trade for some grain, some eggs and some cheese. But you'll have to walk because the log boat has a hole in it. What? I've got to walk? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> You're outside, so we're fine. Can we get an oh. 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 oh? That's awful, Mrs. Hare. Oh. Well, do not worry. I have some herbs and grasses in my basket you can have. Would you like them? Oh, Jeff, can you pass me them? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> the hare hopped around happily and ran off to feed her children. Bye bye, Mrs. Hare. <laughs> bye. Bye. Very good. She <laughs> <laughs> carried on along through the thick fields until she started to approach the deep dark woods. <laughs> Kaya, what lives in the deep dark woods? Uh, the Gruffalo! No. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Um, creepy crawly things. <laughs> she sat down for a rest. And as she looked towards the forest, she heard a growling. Oh, what's that? It's a bear, <laughs> Poppy. <got> nearer. <laughs> and nearer. <laughs> and nearer. <laughs> Where is he, everybody? Behind you. Are you sure? Yeah, oh, no, definitely. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> is he? Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, from behind a tree, a big Very surprised looking bear, bear isn't it? It's a bear. <laughs> I'm very hungry, said the bear. I used to eat all the honey in the forest, but the silly people in the village have covered up the bees' nest and they can't eat it anymore. <laughs> oh no! Can we get an even bigger? Oh, oh. That's awful. Well, do not worry, <laughs> Mr. Bear. In my basket, I have some honey you can have. Do we go. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Where's the honey? Oh, it's over there. Oh, it's over there. She reached into her basket and handed the bear a pot of honey. The bear put his paw into the honey and gobbled it up greedily. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Why, thank you, little girl. Now I have the energy to go further into the woods and look for more honey. The bear turned around and with a wave and a happy growl. Growl <laughs> <laughs> back into the woods. Bye -bye, what is going on, Pops, eh? <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm over it now. It's fine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I could hear the sound of wings fluttering <laughs> and the tinkle of little bells. The sounds got closer. I got a dress is falling out. <laughs> <laughs> Your dress is falling out. Her dress. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, <laughs> yep. Kaya saw. Not that, not that, not that suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, there she is. Kaya saw the most beautiful fairy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do not cry, little girl. My name is Ines, and I've come from the fairy mountain Shahalian and the pub in Abbey Feldy. Although, it's <laughs> <laughs> still six o'clock. <laughs> Magic and mysticism. You could share your stories here. Yeah? No, it was that was really good, wasn't it? Was, it was yeah. Don't remember that when we came years ago. No. I think we just went to there. And yeah. It. Yeah. We've got to go in the museum. There's a table in the water here. Eh? Have a look around here, perhaps. Right, we've got some boats here as well. There's a go goose come in here. It's quite big, there, isn't it? Hello, Goose. <coughs> so Pythias, a 4th century BC, uh, BC Greek man from the colony of Marseille, 
undertook a vast journey to sail around Britain, the Western Isles and even Orkney, getting as far as Iceland, all at the same time that people are living on Cranachs at Loch Tay. So Pythias with a lot of the uh, original references to prehistoric Britain. So Coracle's a small rounded, lightweight boat. Yeah, Coracle's. Coracle. Another one here. Paint some stones if you want to. There you go. We've got some of the colours there for the paint. Yeah. Right. Where do we leave a donation? In these small pots. Can you say maybe mm. you try a few yeah. this way? We have a time yeah. of like history here, isn't it? Ten up right this way, yeah. ten up right this way. Yeah. I mean, I myself would be happy to come down every. Yeah. A few months in Checkham. Yeah. Do you live up here? Yeah. So yeah, I live in Maradona Lock. Awesome. A few months in Checkham, but yeah. then if we can capture that and record that, yeah, exactly. as time goes on, that would actually feed into understanding the yeah. um, yeah. prehistoric side of it. So this um, is all sort of the time, what I'll do time we're looking at, isn't it? Here. Do you have anything like we could do something with funding then, like or? Um. Do you have to sort of? I, mean, I know that's we, a separate got, issue. Uh, right now we don't. We're right we're, we're, we're trying to get through to March. Yeah. Some of the boxes here. Yeah. Things they've found. So a wooden, wooden platter in several pieces, probably made from elder. Stake points. That's the big thing. So that's a foundation pile. An ore. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice little drawing there. He's making some butter. Yeah, yeah. making butter. Yeah. Domestic life on the crack. There's some of the things we were talking about. The butter. The butter yeah, dish. It's half a one, isn't it? Yeah. There's a, a rubbing stone there, wasn't there? And presumably these are not going to light them up. Oh, wow. So these are in water, aren't they, to preserve them? Yeah. Yeah. Foundation piles. Yeah. Foundation piles, yep. Yeah. Underwater archaeology. Try and find out how they lived. And there's some woodworking tools. We've got numbers on there. Number one is uh, a large timber roughly pointed at one end and worked nod notches seen along the pointed end. Yeah. Oh, those are stake points. Music. Music? Yeah. So the, one of the objects found were two small wooden artefacts. One was a short tube resembling a whistle and the other was a delicate notched object resembling part of the bridge of a lyre. Both are dated to 500 BC. So that's the no is that the notch then? Right, gotcha. So that's what so it would have been. Yeah, that's the thing they found down the bottom. Right? Yeah, that one. That's what they found. Yeah, and there's there's a little whistle. Yeah. And a tiny little whistle. Wow. <laughs> huh. Huh. It was all about the songs and stories. So the Roman historian Tacitus says that such songs form the main record of the Iron Age past. Sheds of stories that may have hung 
survived in Bronze and Iron Age art, depicting, depicting, depicting scenes of heroes and monsters, and such as the mythical features, figures and musicians on the Gundestrup cauldron. The music in the Iron Age. So there's an image of a liar etched on a late bronze early Iron Age memorial stella from Luna, Zaragoza, Spain. Zaragoza. Oh, Zaragoza. Thought to be dated between 700 and 500 BC. There have been what they were doing. Mother with the baby, someone telling the story or a song. So pieces of bone from livestock kept on the crannock. These are the, yeah. these are the weight stones. And she was showing us. Showing, showing how they, they drilled them out with a wooden, with yeah. wooden sand, or in the smaller stones, tapped tapped them out with another stone, a tapping stone. Textiles and fibre here. So that's uh, a length of rope made from twisted willow or hazel. Probably had many uses of handmade rope, including secured thatching and hobbling livestock. And some fragments of basket work there as well. This is iron. So they first started making iron in Scotland 2,700 years ago, and it's the beginning of what they call the Iron Age, obviously. And most of them starters. Sorry, go on. I was going to say there's that pin you were telling us oh, about. Oh, that, that was very clothing. Yeah, it's part of the clothing. So yeah. that was a swan, swan. swan's neck ring-headed pin, which was used to fasten clothing. And he said that they, those were only in fashion for about 30 years, so when they find those, they know exactly. Yeah, they can really date it. They can yeah. date it exactly. Hmm. Like the drawings, they're good. So, is this a plough? First oh, yeah. foot plough. One of the earliest methods of cultivating land was to use a wooden or a foot plough only cut shallowly into the soil and that weeds would have grown amongst the grains. Later in the Iron Age they used later in the Iron Age ploughshares were developed and they had iron tips which were fixed onto the plough and cut deep into the soil to allow for better and deeper ploughing which resulted in fewer weeds and a better grain crop. That's for um that's a saddle quern. Yeah. That's where they ground uh, grain into flour. That's yeah, good. Right. We don't know this way, we've got to go back. We've got to go back the out the other side, let's just have yeah. a go. Some pictures. <laughs> there was no school in the Iron Age, but children still had to learn. They learnt to be farmers, musicians, cooks, carpenters, traders. That's lovely. There you go. So the artefacts were left by our Cranach dwelling ancestor 2,500 years ago for us to care, to find, care for an exhibit. So it says here there were over, there are over 30,000 locks in Scotland thought to be more than 400 Cranachs to be found in them. There are bundles of Cranachs in central and southwest Scotland, although they can be found all over the country. If possible Cranachs were used for different purposes, that's like domestic homes and craft workshops. Some may have only been occupied seasonally, while others were in permanent use. And on the Outer Hebrides as well. The lots on there. Yeah. Yeah.
Right, we really enjoyed our stay at the Scottish Cranach Centre. It's well worth a visit. It's two hours thereabouts you should allow uh, to uh, at least. Um, couldn't show you all of the guided tour. They didn't want us filming in the Cranach itself, obviously because people wouldn't go if uh, if I showed you the whole guided tour. Um, plenty of demonstrations there. They showed us uh, people working on lathes and. Uh, making weight stones which is really interesting and the cooking as well and the puppet show of course so yeah really enjoyed it if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up remember subscribe we'll catch up with you on the next one